Good morning, Richard Calhoun, real estate broker here in Silicon Valley, last 40 years. My contact information is on the bottom. We're here to talk about the real estate market in Silicon Valley, week number six. We'll get right into the data slide. This is the first data slide. It shows supply and demand. Your total supply on the market is this blue line right down here. This is the current level of inventory. You can see it's running about 65% of what you'd expect it to be. The benchmark of what I'm comparing it to is the five years. The five years are 2015 through 2019, five years just before the pandemic was announced. I'm using the median of those five years, which were five good years. You already had low inventory in, during those five years, and now we're only at 65% of that low inventory. This is what I call macro data. This is Santa Clara County and San Mateo County, both single family homes and condos and townhouses all grouped together. That product doesn't exist. In a lot of ways, this is not very good data because you can't go out and it's not an indication of what's happening in any given marketplace, but it's a very good indication of what's happening overall in the marketplace. And that was the purpose of inventing macro data, which I did as a result of COVID. Before that, I was focused only on micro market data. The next data point is the gray line. The gray line is the number of new listings that came on the market during the past week. So you can see the gray line is right on top of the yellow line, basically fluctuating on both sides of it all last year and basically this year. So that's saying that normal number of sellers are coming on the market. And in fact, if you analyze it a little bit more carefully, there might've been a little bit lower number of sellers back here in week basically eight through about 24 in 2021. So shortly after the pandemic, well into the summer, we were getting about the normal number of new listings every week, maybe a little bit below. Then basically starting around week 22, somewhere around the middle end of June, we started having completely normal. And then you might even say since Labor Day, where we were having slightly above normal number of new listings coming on the marketplace. And you could argue that this number here is slightly above uh, the five-year median as well. Yes, the first data point is is below. As I've explained in the past, that's because January 1st was on Saturday. So this is the worst level of inventory you'd expect. Some years you have up to six days, additional days. So you could be up until the 7th of January to get inventory coming on the marketplace. And that's why this one data point doesn't bother me. But basically, here you have, and the reason I'm focusing on sellers is everybody's talking about lack of inventory and sellers are hesitant to come on the marketplace. The sellers have been coming on the marketplace, otherwise there wouldn't be new listings. So now let's flip over and look at the red line. That's the demand line. That's what the real story is. If you look at this demand line, basically for the entire chart over here, starting in week number seven of 2021, and just for clarification to get the separation here, what's plotted as week eight is really week seven data. So in 2021, you have to subtract one from the week number to get the uh, separation. Otherwise, Excel just connects the points and they're off by a whole year. So anyway, this is week number seven, even though it's labeled week number eight. And you can see we've been above it, the demand and the demand's consistently been above. And that's what's driving the marketplace. And if you have the normal amount of listings coming on the marketplace and you have more than the normal number of listings leaving the marketplace every week because of excess of demand, and eventually your inventory dwindles down and keeps dwindling down. And that's exactly what we're having. And we're now to the point where you can't get much lower inventory than we currently have. This is looking at the ratio in raw terms, days of unsold inventory, I call it. It's a supply demand balance. And you can see right now, the blue line is where we are. We're basically at approaching 10 days, which I'm not sure we can ever get to. Uh, we're closer than I ever thought we would see. And the reason you can't get much lower than about 10 days is a lot of sellers come on the market on a Wednesday, maybe Thursday, then they turn around and they look at offers on Tuesday and Wednesday, take a day to decide about it, they report it to the MLS. So by the time all that happens, you're on the market for a week. And this is the median, essentially. And it's it's the actual instantaneous, but it's sort of like if the marketplace would be at a constant level for a long period of time, the median, the average, and the days of unsold inventory would all be the same. But the market is never stagnant for a five-week period of time. And so the number is always moving up and down. And, and this is one of those cases where the lower the number, the stronger the marketplace is. Because what it's basically saying is that we take 11 days to sell all your existing inventory at the existing rate of sales, where the five-year median was still very strong.
strong was somewhere around 22. So basically half the speed. I consider anything below of 40 days to be a seller's marketplace. So being anywhere close to 10 is just a superseded, a super hot marketplace. Yes, there are times when we're in a balanced marketplace, usually when we're transitioning and we are in a buyer's market in occasion in Silicon Valley. This line sort of caught me a little bit by surprise. It's the right trend, but more than I was expecting. If you go back and look at the orange line, that's where we were just last week. And now we jump way up here. So we've done a very significant jump in the sale price to list price ratio distribution. Basically, the red dotted line is the best month we had. Everything else on here is weekly data. Basically, the current data is a strong, is an indication that we've had a stronger marketplace than we've ever had in the past. And that's pretty amazing. But it, if you start looking at it, it also makes sense. Why is it happening at this time? Well, if you take February 12th and you go back five weeks, that's the length of escrow. That's right after the New Year's. So now the vast majority of the properties are properties that were negotiated after the New Year. So the buyers were feeling the 2022 marketplace in full strength. And that's why there's such a jump between just last week, because last week you would have had some data in from 2021, pulling everything backwards. But this is a fairly significant jump going from, the, as I said, the orange line down here to the purple line. And there's several different ways you could read it. But basically, you know, you come down here to the axis, basically 75% of the sellers got more than their asking price just last week. And this week, it's basically up to 85%. So there's been basically a 10 point jump at the low end. If you come up to the high end, you know, and it's horizontal right right here. And it's also horizontal at 20% overbid too. And I pointed this out last week, I think for the first time, what that sort of suggests is buyers are going, hey, let's go up 20%. And that's what they're writing their offer at because there's several transactions that are occurring right at 20% over. So that what that says to me when I'm representing a buyer, you really want to go 20.1%, 20.2% to outbid that other person that's going up 20% if that's what the there's a tendency to do. But any Anyway, if you go from here, you're somewhere around 16% to maybe as a high as maybe 20%. And this week, you're somewhere around 27% to maybe 28%. So you can see the jump is pretty significant in the number of sellers getting overbid, or the other way to do it is go vertically up. So you could pick the 35% line and say you were somewhere down here, somewhere around 113%. And now you that same seller percentage is at 118%. So the overbidding has jumped by about 5% in one week. And that is pretty significant. This is the pressure that buyers are feeling to try to get a house accepted, how much over the asking price they're willing to pay. Here is a quick summary of the different components on active inventory. You can see now we're looking at the major micro markets, which are basically single family homes in both counties and then condos and townhouses in both counties. And you're looking at the components. So what are they? Inventory. We're only at 55% of the inventory you'd expect versus 61. San Mateo County, so just across the border, you jump up to 78% down from 91% just a week ago. So you can see it, the level of inventory has dropped relative where you expect it. And the reason I'm always doing this compared to like the five-year median is real estate is very cyclical. So you want to compare the same time of the year. You don't want to compare the entire 21, 2021 year to current because that's that's irrelevant. You want to basically compare February 12th every year to February 12th of the previous years. I don't do it on a daily basis. I do it on a week basis and a five-week basis. And then you come down and you can see that the townhouse condo market is quite a bit slower with Santa Clara being at 90% of the inventory you'd expect and the base cities in San Mateo County actually being at 190% of what you'd expect to have. So they actually have more inventory than you would expect. Then you look at the key indicator, DUI, days of unsold inventory, is the single biggest key indicator in my opinion. It's the supply demand ratio, which dictates what's going to happen with prices in the near term. You're down at 16 days and you're at 13 days. So I was a little aggressive in reading my chart. I was reading it somewhere around 11 and clearly it's going to be higher than 16 and 13, except, you know, I'm not always comparing apples and apples because, you know, this is a one week average. The other one's a five week average. So, you know, there could have been, it could be at 11, you know, so you have to 
pay attention to my different little nuances. And the reason for that is when you're you know, doing this, you're trying to find out what's happened this week versus last week. So 16 days on sold inventory down from 20, 13 days in San Mateo County down from 28. So San Mateo County saw a more dramatic improvement in the marketplace as far as faster, getting faster. And I'm not even sure I'd call it an improvement because the market's so superheated. I think the market would actually improve if it slowed down a little bit. I, I know that for a fact, the buyers would appreciate that. And, you know, being on the market for two weeks isn't the end of the world for the sellers, but that's not the marketplace we're in. And then you can see condos are both improved. And even though San Mateo County has double the inventory you'd expect, it would still sell out everything in 15 days. So that's a, still a very fast marketplace given more inventory than you'd expect. Then you look at closings and you get the sale price. So now you can look at the frequency of overbidding. 70, 83% of the sellers in Santa Clara County, single family homes are getting more than their asking price. That doesn't even include the 5% roughly that are getting their asking price. So so very few, maybe 10% ballpark of the sellers are getting less than their asking price. San Mateo County is a little cooler at 73%. And that is only noteworthy in the fact that San Mateo County is normally outperforming uh, Santa Clara. It has not been that way since the pandemic was first announced. And then if you go down to the condos and townhouses, you can see basically the same improvement, but not, not as much and it's not as hot. Santa Clara County is at basically 70% and the Bay County, Bay cities in San Mateo County are basically at 50%. Then if you look at the magnitude, this is how much pressure the buyers are feeling versus how frequently. They're overbidding by 14% on average. The median that's probably more meaningful is about 2% lower than these numbers. The reason I did average, selected average specifically, was the bulk of the time I'd expect the amount of overbidding to be somewhere around 100%. So the, it, the median would be exactly at 100% for large segments of the time and you wouldn't see fluctuations. So I picked the average, even though it's not the best. I am starting to gather both the median and the average. I don't know if I will report both, but it is noteworthy to at least have some concept of where the median is. Why? Because if you're a buyer, 14% overbidding is what the average overbid is. But if you have someone paying 195% over the asking price, not 190, 95% over the asking price, so they paid 195% of the asking price, that pulls up the average a lot, but impacts the median very little. And the median is the midpoint. It's the most common number and where you'd expect the density to be the dra more dramatic. So if some consumer was using this data and assuming that I'm reporting the median and acted appropriate as if I was reporting the median, they'd actually be overbidding more than they would be wanting to based on the data alone. And, you know, it really doesn't, it is not that mathematical. A lot of it is you, you look at round pricing, you look at how much the buyer really wants this particular home versus the next home. So there's a lot of factors that go into it, but at least I'm trying to make sure you're clear on what my data is that I'm reporting. And you can see condo overbidding is a lot less, but still over 100%. Santa Clara County at 106, San Mateo County, Bay Cities at 102. And then the, we're looking at appreciation. And this is a little bit different. So the peak is where we had the peak appreciation in 2021 and the when it occurred, the week ending of when it occurred. So you can see the peak appreciation was for most of the areas pretty early. San Mateo County actually happened late compared to all the other indicators. This is where we are now. So we're all down a little bit from our peak. We went down quite a bit more and we're actually been recovering. And that's fairly typical when you have a year of a lot of appreciation, you tend to have overshoot on the pricing. And then later in the year, that tends to disappear and prices drift down a little bit. And then it turns around and goes up. But you also have to be careful on whether that's just what's actually selling. So the median being changed or real property value. Values, and we'll see a slide later today where each one of the components has shows a higher rate of appreciation than the county as a whole. And it's like, how is that even possible? The, the, the sum of all the parts can't be greater than 
all the parts. It can be when you're talking about median because you can have a shift. If all of a sudden the lower priced geographical areas are selling more frequently, that pulls down the median price for the county while it could be pushing up the median price for those micro market areas that actually dictate what the median price is. So your median's going up at the same time. Your median for the micro market's going up and your property values are actually going up, but the county data is actually going down because it's the county data again really doesn't exist. What's noteworthy down here is condos have really taken a beating recently. And you wouldn't expect this. You know, if you sold out everything in 14 days, you would not expect to be seeing price depreciation going on. But it's because sellers are lowering their expectations in specifically in San Mateo County that the market is as hot as it is. So you had a 15% appreciation, almost 16% appreciation at the end of August of just last year. So we're only talking six months ago. And now prices are 10%, 11% lower. So the swing has been basically 27% in a very short period of time. But again, you're looking at the median for that area, which is several communities. So for example, if in August, Burlingame was selling all the homes that's say more expensive, and now in this week, we're selling more homes in Redwood City, which tends to be more affordable. Your median for the Bay Cities is going to be plummeting like the data shows without property values plummeting. With that, I'll go over the URLs and then I'll take any questions on what we go over, have gone over before we go into details. So the green is what I call my root URL. You add the 2022 to it to get to the live presentation Saturday morning. To get to the slide deck that I'm going over, you add in H for hand out 2022 02 for the month and 12 for the date and I got I try to get it posted right around 15 minutes before the hour I got it up about 8:43 this morning so it's up there for those that want it you can get to the archives by just using the root URLs. That's a YouTube archive of all my past presentations. I added out my pauses and my goofs and that kind of stuff, but it gets up late, typically later Saturday afternoon. Sometimes I get delayed on that, but if you subscribe, you'll get notified. And then in, if you want specific episodes, you put in the year, month, date code. So with that, I will ask if there's any questions. Not seeing any questions, I will proceed. We're now looking at the micro market data for each one of the different areas. So the, each of the key components, states of sold inventory, which again is the rate of the speed of the marketplace, the frequency of overbidding, the magnitude of overbidding, how much over the buyer is overbidding, and then the price range. And here it's a little bit complicated, but I think it's straightforward once you understand stand at the middle number is the median price, which is what the color is assigned to. The number to the left is the lowest 10 percentile. The number to the right is the highest 10 percentile or the 90 percentile. When I'm doing the county data to make it stand out, there isn't a color because I don't map it and I do it in thousands. And then all the micro market areas are done in millions. So that way it jumps out at you you know, this is countywide data, this is countywide data, that's countywide data. So you have three countywide data points, everything else is ending in an M, so you know it's millions and you know it's micro market data. So the first column, days of unsold inventory, the most important one, because it's real time, it fluctuates, it sort of didn't tell you what's going to be happening with frequency and magnitude of overbidding as well as pricing. It's also the leading indicator because you don't have to wait for escrows to close to get the sale price to calculate any of the frequency appreciation or magnitude of overbidding. So if you look at here, you can see the hottest area that I'm picking up real quick is 9.2 days in your moderate priced areas. The moderate price areas are Santa Clara, Campbell, Cambrian, and Willow Glen. So the, the center of the valley, sort of the bread and butter of Silicon Valley. You know, then you go to Cupertino, Sunnyvale at 10.9. So those two are the hottest marketplaces. And then you go up from there. The redder the color, the faster the marketplace, the lighter the shade of red, the slower the marketplace is, but still uh, what I consider to be a seller's marketplace, which is Los Altos Palo Alto at 34 days. When you go white, it's a balanced marketplace. That's your Atherton, Palo, Atherton, Menlo Park, Portola Valley, Woodside, and San Mateo County. And if we had anything above 80 days, then it would start getting a shade of blue in there, indicating that it was a ice cold buyer's marketplace. So you can see the different areas. You can see condos and townhouses are doing very respectable in Santa Clara County down here at nine days. So it's some of the hottest marketplaces 
as far as the speed of the marketplace. Then if you look at the frequency of overbidding, countywide, 83% of the sellers got more than their asking price. Cupertino Sunnyvale is leading the pack with 96%, followed quickly by the North San Mateo County area, which is San Bruno. Uh, South San Francisco would be in there. Daly City would be in there. Foster City is up there, but a very small micro market area. Then you come in pretty quick all together. The lowest percentage I see is South County at 70%, with the exception of San Mateo County expensive areas at 40%. So you can see there's quite a bit of range if you will go all the way from 40% to 97%. But the bulk of that range is basically from about 75% to 85%. So the bulk of the areas are pretty compact in how much they're, how common overbidding is. Condors are a little bit less, but you can see that, you know, the moderate low price is very respectable at 86% of the sellers get more than their asking price. So we really can't say the market is a cool marketplace when it comes to condos. Then you look at the magnitude of overbidding. The biggest percentage of overbidding is Cupertino Sunnyvale at uh, 21% over the asking price. The lowest is the expensive areas in San Mateo County at 2%. But looking at it fairly quickly, I would basically say the bulk of the price is are from 10% to about 15% over the asking price for the magnitude in single family homes. If you compare that to condos, the numbers are a whole lot lower, somewhere around 5%. So the amount of overbidding in single family homes is quite a bit higher. And then the last group of columns is the pricing. And here, red is the highest price. White is basically the median. Blue is below the median. So if you wanted to find the more most affordable areas, it looks like it's East San Jose, South San Jose, and Central San Jose, followed by South County, then probably followed by North San Mateo County, then followed by the moderate low-priced areas, Santa Teresa, Blossom Valley, Milpitas, then the moderate areas. And also in with that would be the coast. And the more expensive areas are obviously Atherton, Menlo Park, followed by Los Altos, Palo Alto, followed by Saratoga, Las Gatas. Then you have a whole bunch that come close together. You have Foster City, you have the Bay Cities, you have Redwood City, and in between that you had Cupertino Sunnyvale. So you can see that if someone was looking in Cupertino Sunnyvale, you can take them up to San Mateo County and find comparable price properties. And if you take them over to the coast, you can find actually more affordable properties. And then in condos, because there's fewer micro market areas and the prices, if you look at this, are much more compressed. What I did here is the highest priced area got assigned the white color, and then the colors got the bluer, the more affordable the areas were. And it if you can sit there and look at this, you know, say the colors are very similar, but if you look at the median price, the median prices are very similar, 750,000, 720,000, and 660,000. And then even the highest ones are 830,000. So you go from 660,000 to 830,000. When you're talking about properties that are up here in the millions, these are very uh, closely priced together. Here we're looking at the number of new listings. This is raw data for as a percentage. So you can see how over time, how the blue line, which is the current data or last year's data is essentially tracing out the yellow line, which is the five-year median in raw counts. So you can see the number coming on the marketplace is essentially exactly what you'd expect it to be. Yeah, there's some fluctuation. Here you can see the blue line was below the yellow line. Here it was very, very consistently right on top of it. Here you could argue that the blue line is above the yellow line a little bit. And in 2022, again, the blue line's above the yellow line, which is saying there's slightly more new inventory coming on the marketplace than you would expect based on my benchmark years, which are 15 through 19, which is what we had just before the pandemic. This is total inventory because what we'll see in the second of the surplus demand, you can see we started with surplus inventory that the extra demand that we'll see next rapidly drew away that surplus inventory. Then you had increasing below normal amount of inventory. And now you're continuing that significantly below normal inventory. And I think that's going to continue to grow. I hinted at the demand side and here is the demand side. And if you look at that, this 
To me, this is a story. Basically, in all of 2021, the demand, the blue line was above the yellow. Yes, there's exceptions for the major holidays, but the reason for the exception when you're looking at only one year, 2021, comparing it to five years, 2015 through 19, the five years get spread over two weeks. So the holiday impact is not as significant in the week of the holiday, but more significant the week before or the week after. And that's the only reason the blue line got down. And the same thing here with Thanksgiving and then again at Christmas time and New Year. And that's why I'm comfortable saying the demand has been consistently above where you'd expect it to be. Here's days of unsold inventory, the three major components. Santa Clara County single family homes in the red, San Mateo County single family homes in the brown, and then the yellow is Santa Clara County condos and townhouses. Traditionally, the brown San Mateo County would be doing lower, which is better than the red line in Santa Clara County. That hasn't been the case until very recently. It basically changed over shortly after the new year, and San Mateo County is again outperforming Santa Clara County. I don't believe that's going to stay that way long term. I think what we're seeing is some systemic changes that we will see long term, which is buyers aren't willing to pay the premium to be in San Mateo County any longer because they don't have to commute to work every day. And also the work center place of Silicon Valley has moved south and east gradually over the years and continues to be doing that, which makes homes in Santa Clara County more desirable because they're getting shorter and shorter commutes as the job centers move south and east. Here is a map showing the heat distribution. Here, the red of the color, the faster the marketplace, the whiter the color or the bluer the color, and there is no blue, the slower the marketplace. I will point out the reason Almaden Valley is white or no color actually is because there's so few homes and there's nothing I could group it with to make it statistically significant. You know, San Mateo County has the same problem with Foster City. There just for several reasons, I went ahead and plotted it, but a lot of times it's raw data that fluctuates. It really doesn't uh, matter that much. So now you're looking at the frequency of overbidding. You know, if you look at last year, there was a lot more sawtooth than I would expect. I would expect this number to be fairly constant. It isn't. It's just a reality, even though it's macro data. So there's like 204 data points in this data for this week. It's all over the place. You know, the trends are there. You can tell where it becomes interesting is weeks like this. Is this a change in the marketplace or is it just statistical fluctuation? So it's one hard to tell trends on. But what is very noteworthy, look how dramatically the frequency of overbidding increased just on the properties that closed in the last week. And again, I pointed out at the beginning, in my opinion, that's because we dropped off home some transactions, a significant number of transactions from the very last week in 2021. We're picking it up by transactions the week after New Year's, or potentially we're losing transactions that were negotiated in that first week, losing those and picking up ones the second week. So anyway, you went from basically 75% of the sellers getting their overbid to something like 87%. This is macro data for closings in the past week. I mean, to be approaching 90% of the sellers getting more than their asking price for the both counties and both types of properties, that's hard to believe, but yet that's what the data is. So we are in one heck of a hot market. This is the data over time. Here you can see that Santa Clara County is outperforming San Mateo County as far as the frequency of overbidding. So the last time I said San Mateo County was outperforming Santa Clara, that was on the speed of the marketplace. Now you're looking at how much the overbidding is. Yes, they're clearly related. They're both up here. San Mateo County is probably about 73%. Santa Clara County looks like it's maybe 81%. So it, it's definitely up there. And then condos and townhouses are down around 60%. It's definitely up there. This is going to be five-week data, which is why this data here is almost approaching 90%. And this is the, you know, the entire area. Now your some of the whole areas are nowhere near 90%, but that's because this is five weeks worth of data. And the other one was just one week of data. And so you're not getting pulled down by stuff that closed last week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Here, you're looking at the frequency of our bidding in the different geographical areas. Anything between 33 and 50% of the sellers getting their asking price is what I consider to be a balanced marketplace. It has no color. And if you want to 
anywhere else in the country and probably in the world and said that a, half your sellers are getting overpricing, you consider to be a balanced marketplace, they'd look at you sideways. When we're looking at areas here where you're at 91%, you're at 96%, you're at 87%, you're at 83%. I mean, these numbers are so strong. That's why I've set 33 to 50% to be a normal balanced marketplace. Somewhat arbitrary, but you know, it's what reflective in the data. Now, the magnitude of overdate bidding over time is very similar to the frequency of overbidding. Look at the how the pattern changed. Last year you were skyrocketing up. This year you're skyrocketing up. This year you're skyrocketing up at an even faster pace than you did last year. But the trends are the same. And again, that's one of the reasons why I try to compare real estate year over you know the week over a year ago week, not this week versus last week this week versus last month. I try to go this week compared to last year's this week. Here is overbidding countywide. You can see that Santa Clara County really started to take off the end of last year. And these are closings. So these were closings that were offers that were negotiated basically starting in November. The buyers said, hey, you know, we think the market's going to be crazy in 2022. We're going to go ahead and go crazy now because if we overpay for a property in 20, the end of 2021, we'll look like we were geniuses early in 2022. And look at this increase. So we've gone from basically record high at 11% over asking price to areas that we've never seen before, where you're at 114% of the asking price or 14% above the asking price. You can see Santa Clara condos has really taken off as well. So the buyers in Santa Clara County are really feeling the pressure and are willing to overbid a higher, mag higher percentage of the seller's asking price. Here's the heat distribution map of of the magnitude of overbidding. Again, the red of the color, the higher the overbidding. 117% is saturated red. So saturated red is Cupertino Sunnyvale. Close would be Campbell, Los Altos, Palo Alto, and the Bay Cities. That's why there's a lot of red on the map is all those cities are very close to the saturated red. When I set up my scale, I, I didn't think we would be here in part because our highest overbidding in the last time we ran up was 112.8% in San Mateo County, I believe it was. And then I think later, it hit 113 percent but these numbers of 120 percent are insane even for silicon valley differences this graph we looked at before i'm going to skip over it rapidly because we're going to this one because it's more readable there's only 12 weeks of data so here's this week's data you can see the yellow line is down here so you can see for 11 weeks we bounced back and forth here and in 11 weeks we didn't move as much as we moved in the last one week. So the movement in the last one week is fairly significant. And again, this is both, this is macro data. So both counties, both types of properties, and it's closings only in the past week. So these are closings that happened between the 5th of February and the, the end of the 11th of February through midnight last night. So what you're dropping off is the transactions that occurred five weeks ago. So you're essentially dropping off the beginning week of January where people were still in the holidays. Now we've rolled over from last year to this year, and that's what this huge jump up. I will admit it, it's a bigger jump than I've ever noticed in the past. It's bigger jump than I would have expected. It's the direction I would have expected. It's going to be interesting. I would almost expect next week to go up in the same direction and not as much. But I'm hesitant to say that now because this week was such a jump. I don't know if it was a fluke and next week we'll see a little correction and we'll go back closer to the orange line. I think that in all reasonable expectations would be will be at the purple line plus or minus and I would favor plus a little bit more than the minus. This is looking at the 50 percentile price. This is the median price that almost everybody follows. You have the three major components to so Santa Clara County single family homes, San Mateo County being more expensive obviously in condos and townhouses. You can see the dip down 
here in Santa Clara County. This is not necessarily property values for your condos. Again, I've said this many times today. If all of a sudden your homes in Cupertino, Sunnyvale become less desirable and become a smaller part market share, and the market share is made up by more homes in, say, uh, East San Jose or South County, that's going to bring down the county-wide median sale price, but not pull down property values. And that's why historically I have focused so much on micro market data. The concept here was the market's going to change dramatically by COVID and we want to see what's happening with COVID. So I invented and started tracking the macro data. This is the price distribution. The red of the color, the more expensive, the white colors are basically all at your median price and the bluer colors are the more affordable areas. The numbers are over here. The colors assigned by the middle number, the median. The number to the left is the 10 percentile number. The number to the left is the 90 percentile number. Here, it becomes pretty clear. For example, in Santa Clara County, your median price is 22.6% higher than the all closings in the year of 2020. So we're going back a little, a little over a year ago. We're going to the entire 2020. That is a lower number than essentially all the micro market areas except Cupertino, it, and it's close at 21.8%. And if you, you know, if you looked at this number, you'd expect this to be up somewhere. You know, you have 33% appreciation, 36% appreciation, 31% appreciation, 28% appreciation. You know, you clearly would expect this number to be north of, and that 28 is almost 29. I'd expect the appreciation to be somewhere around 28, 29, 30% appreciation. It's only at 23%. How is that possible? Well, if all of a sudden the migration is towards these lower priced areas away from the more expensive areas, so you sell fewer homes in Los Altos, Palo Alto, fewer homes in Saratoga, Las Gatas, fewer homes in Cupertino, Sunnyvale, and you sell more homes in Santa Teresa, Blossom Valley, East San Jose, South San Jose, and South County, San Martin areas, then your median for the county would go down even while property values are going up. Another way to look at it is you can see the yellow highlights are all back here, all basically since the middle of December. And yet the median price peaked way back in, I think it was the end of June, and I don't have the date, but the previous peak was 24%. And I think it was the last week in June for Santa Clara County. You have the same issue going on with Santa Clara, uh, San Mateo County. The median is 24%. And with the exception of the North San Mateo County area, everything's bigger than that. 33, 26, 42, 33, 46, and finally 115. You'd expect, a, you know, an appreciation again, somewhere around 30, maybe even 35%. Your areas have all been appreciated fairly recently. And the countywide data is only at 24%. And last week it was only at 11%. The data went up 11% in one week. No, property values did not go up 13% in one week. The distribution shift, some more expensive homes sold. And that's what's wrong with macro data. Here we're looking at two tables that are very similar. The first First table is February. So this is looking forward because I can't possibly have February data until we're 35 days past February 1st, which if I'm doing my math real quick is somewhere around the 7th of March. So until the 8th of March, I can't possibly have apples and apples comparison, but I put a, this up here for comparison. Right now at this time of the year, you only have 340 homes. That is a record low. I expect this number by March 7th to be quite a bit higher. Do I expect it to be a record? record low, I would almost wager, yeah, because I'm not sure with the amount of demand we're seeing that we can climb to 615 homes. Yes, we will climb. You know, what number would I pick out? 525, 550 maybe, because it's going to be a pretty rapid climb. But And a lot of that climb is going to be that last week because the homes coming on that last week to Wednesday, Thursday, Friday won't have had an opportunity to sell. A lot of it's just you're getting a higher number of new listings that will disappear the next week. You know, it'd be almost interesting to look at inventory of homes that have been on the market more than 14 days. And I, that number would almost be zero. There's only so much data I'm even willing to look at. This tells you the median square footage and and average bedrooms and bathrooms, the average and median days on marketplace, you can see it's 14 and seven, record low numbers, not dramatically lower, but 
as these numbers get low, it's harder and harder to get them to be lower. Would I expect these numbers to change? Not really. If I had to guess which direction they would go, I think they're going to decrease slightly. Days of unsold inventory, I actually expect this to go up slightly. Basically, I would probably call it level. So if we're somewhere around 15 to 17 per, uh, days of unsold inventory around March the 7th, that wouldn't surprise me. Number of sales, this number will climb significantly. Will it be a record low? I don't think so. I actually think there's a very good chance we will exceed the 927, 928 from here. Will we exceed it by a lot? Not really. And it, why not? Because there isn't the inventory for the buyers to buy. Magnitude and frequency of overbidding, as insane as it sounds, there's no direct indication of which direction these would typically go. But I would tend to think that they're both going to be going in the upward direction as buyers feel more pressure to buy a house as we get further into 2022. I I think more and more buyers are going to have made offers and lost out and the frequency and magnitude of overbidding is going to continue to go up. What's the direction of price? There's no question in my mind anyway, that prices barring some unexpected event or even an expected event that it ne it negatively impacts the marketplace. I expect these to be going up fairly dramatically. I'll point out from the top of my head, I think we hit 1704 or something for the median and you know we're not at that level level yet, but we will get there. That's the overshoot that I talked about. But again, remember median price for the county isn't indicating what's happening. And again, this has gone away from macro data to single family homes in Santa Clara County only. And this slide is the same information, but this is now comparing apples and apples, but that means we have to be going back in time. So now what we're looking at is January data. So this was collected on February the 5th, going through February the 4th. So basically data that's now a week old or a year and a week old or two years and a week old. You know, you can see now comparing apples and apples, median days on the market for this was what's on the marketplace. And the only reason it's so low is basically the only thing that's on the marketplace at on Friday night at midnight is stuff that came on the marketplace that week. So, it, you know, half the homes came on the market since Monday is what it's telling you because you have Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, and I don't think they count Friday. So that's why you get back to Monday. So half the homes have come on the market since Friday that were since Monday that we're on the market Friday at the end of the day. Then if you look at inventory, 349, that is an apples and apples comparison. And that was a record low. If you look at the speed of the marketplace, 15 and seven days, those are record lows, both of them. If you look at the number of sales, that is not a record high number of sales. And the only reason it wasn't a record high number of sales, there wasn't the inventory for buyers to buy. Magnitude and frequency of overbidding is record high numbers. Sale price is our record highs of what's showing because I'm comparing the time of the year. They're not an all-time record high, but they are record high for this time of the year. And with that, I'm finished. So here's my root URLs again, and I will pause and see if anyone has any questions. Not seeing any questions, I will end it and wish everyone a happy week and see you next week. Take care. Bye now.